David Brown reporting from Silicon Valley, continuing our ongoing interview of Australian CEOs that are breaking into the U.S. marketplace. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Eddie Sheehy of Newix. Eddie has actually participated in the Australian Innovation Shootout, and he was one of the finalists chosen from all of Australia to represent Australia in this competition. Eddie, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Eddie, could you tell us a little bit about Newix and how the product works and why people would be interested in buying it? Well, Nuix is the world's most advanced email and electronic discovery software. We've developed it over the last nine years, um, initially with the significant assistance of the Australian Government, Australian Department of Defence, Customs, the Australian Securities Investment Commission, and, and others. Um, Quite a bit of help, though. It's nice to see when the government actually does what your tax dollars are supposed to do, isn't it? Um, it was a fabulous um, place to start from. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, after about six and a half to seven years worth of R&D, we started to commercialize. Um, there's, you know, Microsoft Vista wasn't in R&D for that long. Uh, and that means that when we hit the market, we hit the market really well. Um, we, our customers just love the product, largely because you know, we're up to 40 times faster than our competitors. And we have a better search functionality. And people can, can find things out of masses of data and it rather quickly. Uh, when, when you say quickly, how does that, um, I'm guessing that you have competitors in this space. Uh, are you quicker, faster? But I mean, how do you differentiate your product in, in a marketplace? Um, that's a really interesting question. In the US, we differentiate ourselves based on speed. Okay. Uh, you know, if you put us up against our competitors, you know, everybody's amazed. Uh, there's, a, there's one competitor product which I won't mention. Um, one server with us versus 75 servers with them gets the same result. So wait, wait. So you're saying that 75 servers on their product? Is the same as you having one server? Correct. For, from a speed perspective? From a speed perspective. Okay, well that's, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, it's, it's an almost apples for apples comparison as well. So um, that's, that's, the, that's the processing power that, that we bring to bear on things because of the different way that we've actually approached those data sets uh, and the, the problem in general. So we could probably agree in product then because if you're saving the customers that much energy and time the machines. I, um, I know the, an organization uh, not here in, in, in the US, but um, they have 100 computers going at any one time um, to, to facilitate. Uh, just doing searches? Just, well, just doing creating documents on the back of searches that have already, already happened. Oh, okay. Um, you know, we can replace that with one Dell R900 server. Really? You know, it's a chunky server, but it's only one of them. So, from a competitive advantage, speed in North America is your number one competitive advantage. Is that something where your competitors are going to be able to gain on you quickly, or do you have a patented algorithm, or, or what is it that, that's going to protect you? Because the name of the game in Silicon Valley is, you might be the best today, but who's coming along tomorrow? So how, how do you kind of do that in such a competitive marketplace? There's a, 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 there's a, there's a saying in Ireland about you know, how you get to, um, to there from here. Well, I wouldn't start from where I am. <laughs> um, the, um, the thing is that we spent six and a half years in R&D, we understood what went wrong and what went right. Um, our architecture is, is designed to, to scale. Um, most of our architectures here were designed for a small uh, problem that was in front of them. Um, there's big differences. Um, sure. We make use of every inch of, uh, of a piece of hardware, but on top of that, we, we do things that nobody else does uh, within the software environments. Um, Sure enough, somebody might be able to, to do it, but I suspect they're going to have to spend most of that three years, four years, five years worth of you know hard work to actually get there. Um, I suppose the other the other point is that that's only you know we started from that. And now we built on the other three modules beyond that. You know the fabulous search functionality, the review platform that goes up to you know our biggest customer has four hundred and fifty people reviewing data and cases at the same time. Mm. You know, that's unheard of in any country. Uh, and last, we have a, a fabulous production uh, export, uh, export, which you know, means that we are now integrate it into you know, all the different uh, court environments. Um, I suppose the last thing is, you know, we, have a, we have a lot of uh, functions that you know, we can help out our partners with that go well beyond what's on, what, what we, where we actually advertise. And right. um, it's one of those things about Australian products. Uh, I, I'm not unique in, in this. We seem to be very poor at marketing. We're always about four months behind where our technology is, whereas 
and um, quite often in, in environments in the US and where we come across is that their marketing is always 12 months ahead of where the product is. Right, well that's the famous uh, Microsoft Vaporware, just buy it today and it'll be ready in 12 months, right? Well, you buy today and you actually are surprised what additional stuff that we're giving you today okay. that we didn't advertise or, sell or tell you that we were giving you. Fantastic. So one of the things that I, I see when I'm talking to Australian entrepreneurs breaking into the US market is they look at the US and they're like, wow, that's such a big marketplace. Where do I start? What vertical do I focus on? Did you guys do quite a bit of market research before you entered the U.S. market, or how did you how did you decide the U.S. was a place for your product or service? That's actually an extremely good question as well. Um, we actually I went to went to the U.S. Uh, you know three or four times, went to trade shows, talked to lots of people, met lots of customers, and um, you know you kind of think you know something, but you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we then put somebody on the ground uh, who knew the company backwards, was completely trustworthy. And he was there for 12 months. And during that 12 months, you know, our original ideas were found to be probably correct, but you know, you're gonna to have to feed yourself for at least two or three years if you go down that business plan. So he went looking for you know the, the places where where our technology works um, uh, against the problems that are, that are there. Um, we do things extremely better than in things that we're really good at, but things that are the norm in the US are not necessarily the norm in other parts of the world. So we then had to add functionality to our core product to actually bring it up to the standard that is expected within the US for certain things. And then once we have those equated, and they're largely done, um, we then bring our additional our, our speed on board, which says you know we can do everything that the US product can do, and we're forty minutes faster. Gotcha. Um, that's the value proposition. So would you say that um, the market research that you did was beneficial to your long-term strategy? Absolutely. You can't come to the US and expect to win unless you actually have your feet on the ground for a period of time uh, to understand what people are saying, what they mean by what they say, mm. uh, and, and the stuff that they're really <coughs> said. Um, and then, you know, put your plan in place, get your product right, and then start investing in the big dollars into it. Yes, um, this morning actually we announced a, um, a partnership with the uh, Los Angeles a litigation support organization called Etaris. Um, and out there in, in Los Angeles, they have the ability to process a terabyte of information of electronic documents in under 14 hours. Now, to give you. How your competitors do that in? <coughs> Three weeks? Four weeks? Three weeks, wow. Okay. Um, so that's to, to, a, to a legal company, that would obviously be of tremendous value if their competitors were using a different product and uh, they can get stuff through much faster and be able to work that many weeks before the other team even knows what's going on, right? For our partners, um, we give them access to our, our high-end technology. Their motivation and their motto is to get back to their customer tomorrow. Mm, well, with 13 hours you could do that, right? Yep. So, you know, it sounds like you do some really interesting things here and obviously the future looks pretty bright for Newix, but where do you see your company in uh, a couple of years? I mean, that's the old thing here. Silicon Valley is famous for the, the flame out and buy out. And then there's the companies that really have, like you said, done their market research, really fit in a good niche, and they skyrocket. Where, where do you see Nuex and Eddie in two years? Nuex will be the Google free map search. That's a, that's a pretty big statement. And, and you believe you can back that up? I can back it up today. And the next part is, is market acceptance. Mm. Um, and we're doing a pretty good job of, of getting us, ourselves out there. You know, we have thousands of users of, of our product and virtually every single one of them loves it. Um, for anybody who has not been able to find an email or for any corporation that has had a hard time being able to under, under, undergo an electronic discovery um, problem, well, you know, we're a five minute to 30 minute installation process, you know, leave it run and you can, you know, your electronic discovery solution, our problems are almost done for that. Hmm. You know, from organizations that pay, you know, Gartner was saying there's organizations that are, that are uh, funding a billion dollars worth of legal expenses every year. You know, you know. Microsoft being one of those, of course. Not that we would name names, of course, anyway. Not that we would name names, but, you know, we're probably, we are the only organization that I know of that can process an exchange database file um, directly, you know, mm. most other organizations will spend days just transforming, beef, right? pulling bits out of it, making it, and then processing bits of that, and depending on how fast they they want to do it, 
um, we just point and click. That's fantastic. Well, Eddie, I appreciate you taking the time to come in to speak to us. Um, to my regular viewers, I do apologize for wearing a tie. I promise not to make that happen again. Um, Eddie, I look forward to speaking to you in a couple of years and hearing about the fantastic progress you've made. But uh, again, congratulations on doing the Innovation Shootout, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing about your progress over the next couple of years. Thank you very much, Alan. I really appreciate your uh, very kind offering. Thank you, Eddie. You have a good day now. I will be.